Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, we're gonna make some potato leek soup. This is vichyssoise, like a very classic French soup. Um, so yeah, you can serve it hot. It'll be potato leek soup when it's served chilled. It's uh, vichyssoise. I think I learned about this um, watching Julia Child. And I remember my mom making it when I was a kid. Um, my version is a little different from Julia Child's. Hers is super, super simple. So it's basically just like cook some potatoes and leeks uh, add some chicken stock and heavy cream and then blend it. Um, I'm gonna add a couple of little bit of a couple of extra things uh, but really it is gonna still stay quite simple. Um, so I'm starting with a couple of russet, pota russet potatoes that I'm uh, just gonna peel. If you don't find that idea appealing uh, you can always uh, Leave the peels in if you want. It might, you know, just give them a good scrubbing if you're gonna do that. And don't, and your soup will not be the kind of perfect white it's supposed to be. Did you know that these little things on these peelers are there to pull out eyes like that? I went for a long time not knowing that. Ooh, that's a real deep eye. Until I saw someone do it and I was like, holy cow, like I've gone through probably 10 years of my career using these peelers and I never knew that that's what that little thing there was for. All right, this is what I'm eating. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna start my pot, my pot going. If I can, okay. Preheating a little there. And we'll use some butter. A few tablespoons of butter. And some olive oil. Yeah, if you've ever thought to yourself, I wish there were more cold soups in my life. Um, Vichy sauce is a good place to start or to expand to. All right, these are just some leeks. We got them at the farmer's market last weekend. The So I'm gonna cut the bottoms off Split them, uh, the dark green parts of the top, I actually already took off previously and used them to make some stock. And that's why they're not on here. But normally you would cut off those dark greens uh, and then you could keep the dark greens and use them, uh, well, like I did in stock. All right, so now I'm gonna discard these really kind of rough outer layers. And then the rest, you just wanna make sure that there's no sand up in there because it can get a little sandy in those leeks. They grow in kind of sandy soil and they kind of push it up and it gets into those layers. Okay. There's, there's a good deal of sand there. That's what you're looking out for. There's, there's a real sandy guy. Oops, I hear butter bubbling. Once you start to hear that kind of popping noise, it means your butter's gonna, most of the moisture has started to evaporate out of it and you're gonna move, your temperature's gonna rapidly get much hotter. Um, and soon after that point, your butter's gonna start browning. In this particular dish, I don't want my butter to brown because I don't want that flavor. Um, because, you know, this is one of those dishes that is intentionally very sort of subtle in flavor. Let me slow down a little, slow down. but it allows you to appreciate those subtle flavors. All right, so some leeks. I'm gonna get those leeks right into that butter and oil mixture right now. And you can always, you know, feel free to use much more leeks and less potato or much more potato and less leek. You know, I tend to try and go about like sort of equal parts by volume. I'd say weight wise, probably two to one potato to leek. But, um, you know, it's always eyeballed. It's a couple potatoes and about as much leek as I just used right here. Honestly, I used this much leek because it came in one bunch. All right, a little pinch of salt. We'll do some ground white pepper. Just so you keep that nice pale color. Okay, and so we're just looking to sort of sweat those leeks out 
The salt will help draw out some of that moisture in them. And then we'll just slowly cook them down until they're sort of semi-melted. You do want to um, stir regularly so that you don't end up browning spots of the leeks, which I almost inevitably do because I get distracted by something. All right, so we got our potatoes. Just gonna split them in half, cut them into kind of rough chunks like this. Okay. And then to those leeks, I'm gonna also add some garlic. Say a good, mm, say that many. That many cloves. Oh, sorry, Matt, I was painting, painting my the new dresser I'm building for my son. Oh, so my hand is covered in a little bit of paint that won't come off. You see, I was talking about painting, and I almost burned the leaks. Don't burn the leeks. All right, garlic, smash, 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 and smash. This soup is nice because um, it is delicious served hot, uh, but you can also serve it cold. So like, I'll make some, right? And I'll, I'll heat it up for dinner and then the next day, after I've refrigerated the leftovers, uh, by the way, all I do is smash that garlic. I'm not even gonna bother to chop it up. We're gonna blend this all later. Um, but then the next day, you know, for lunch, you just eat it cold straight out of the fridge or I can send it, you know, with my daughter to school and she can eat it cold for lunch. Hot or cold, take your pick. It's good either way. All right, so we are getting down to the wire. Almost done with this recipe. Um, the other ingredient I have, I got some Heavy cream. Um, you can use regular milk if you want. Um, I'm going kind of the, uh, the Julia Child classic way. Uh, and I'm using some of this stuff. I don't have any uh, fresh chicken stock with me right now, so I'm using some of this stuff, which is uh, an improvement on powdered soup. That's the name of the brand. Or perhaps a, a greater than broth all right better than bouillon that's what it is so a little bit of that stuff in there which i do find to be better than uh, powdered bouillon although I, I also use powdered bouillon from time to time who am i kidding all right some water a couple cups of water maybe three cups of water um, so that's basically three cups of chicken stock because I had that bouillon added in there. I'm gonna add our potato. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this all come to a simmer and I'm gonna cook the potatoes just in this uh, broth and leek mixture and the cream will add in at the end when we're kind of emulsifying it all and blending it. Um, it just makes sure that it just ensures that first of all it, the pot doesn't bubble over very easily, which can happen easily when you're uh, boiling dairy, and also that um, the cream doesn't uh, you know accidentally break, which can happen if you heat up cream too hot. All right, so I'm just gonna let this simmer uh, until the potatoes are done. So I will see you in ten minutes or so. Um, so the potatoes you can see are simmering away. They're mostly done cooking, so I have this cake tester. Basically, I'm just poking, poking through the pieces of potato to see if there's really any kind of resistance left to them. Um, and no, they're feeling pretty, pretty tender. So this soup, uh, oh, so I'm gonna finish and grab some things to finish it over here. We get some nutmeg. I could have stuck a, a, um, a bay leaf in there too, I think when it was simmering and that would have been good, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna do nutmeg now. So I get myself a nutmeg nub. Uh, you can of course use grated nutmeg, but fresh grated just smells a little bit better. 
I like a good amount of nutmeg in my potato soup. And it's all right. So at this stage, you know, depending on your level of commitment to smoothness, you know, you can really just go in with a, uh, if you want like a real nice rustic soup, boil the crap out of it, then go in there with a masher, you know, um, and you just leave some chunks of potato in there, um, but you also get enough broken up to kind of thicken the sauce into a, a really hearty thing. You know, so you can do something like that if you want and just serve it as is. You know, maybe serve it with a splash of cream to drizzle on at the table. You know, do something like a, just a little bit of cream at the end. It's very similar to Colombian um, ajiaco when you do it this way, actually. Different, different herbs and seasonings, but uh, essentially, you know, cooking potatoes until they fall apart like that. I'm just kind of leaving it rustic. So that's one way we can do it. Um, the way we are going to do it today, though, is with the blender. Um, and, you know, if you've ever tried sticking um, mashed potatoes in a food processor, um, you'll know that they become incredibly, incredibly sticky when you do that um, because uh, essentially you're rupturing all the starches, um, which then jump off and... Uh, form like a sort of almost you know like a real elastic almost slimy texture to it um, so generally it's a bad idea to put potatoes in uh, in a violently whirring uh, contraption but in this case there's going to be enough liquid in here that you won't really get that sort of glue effect um, my wife who is Colombian and uh, you know grew up eating ajiaco the Colombian potato soup um, does not like the texture of um, blended blended potatoes, even when they're diluted down in a soup like this. Uh, she much prefers the sort of more rustic texture um, that uh, I had there. But my wife is on vacation for two weeks, so I get to make the soup the way I want. All right, so I added a splash of cream into there. I might add a little bit more after tasting it, but for now, I'm going to go with that amount and see what we come up with. All right, very little, low. Don't want it to go exploding on us. We got to get nice and creamy in there. You know, if I was working still my restaurant days, you know, I used to make soups like this. And if I was doing that, I would uh, probably drop like another three sticks of butter into there as it was pureeing. Emulsify as much butter as you can into the soup. That's sort of one of the one of the tricks. <laughs> um, but for home use, I'm good. All right, there is our potato leek soup. Doesn't that look delicious? Delightful. I will add a little bit more cream. We can use a little pinch more salt, white pepper. And even some more nutmeg. This came out a really nice color. I like that kind of Pale green from, I used a good amount of uh, leek greens in there. I don't know if you can tell the, uh, the, from the color grading from the GoPro camera, but it has this really kind of nice, very, very pale green color to it. Now when you serve this, ideally you've got something, I know I have chives in here somewhere, chives, chives, where are the chives? There they are. Got some chives here. They've seen better days, but they'll be fine. Um, back at some of the restaurants I used to work at, when you cut the chives, your goal was to cut them, uh, cut, cut each slice thinner than the width of a chive. Um, and so, you know, you do it by very having a very sharp knife and kind of pulling it through like this. 
and that's how you get those teeny tiny sort of restaurant style sliced chives. Um, I prefer these days to just kind of keep it, generally keep it more rustic unless I'm doing like a real fancy dish, but for something like this, for potato leek soup, nah. All right, let me get a bowl. And that ladle. Let's give her a taste. See how easy this is though? And of course, it will be good tomorrow when it's cold. The one thing you might have to do when it's when, when it cools down is find you might find that you'll want to reseason it because things that are cold uh, don't flavors don't register as much, so you kind of need to make them extra salty. All right, let's finish with some bunch of chives, even a little more nutmeg. Oops, don't get lost in there. And let's finish with a little bit of olive oil, right over the top. And cheers. That was very good. Um, Homon is already actually upstairs. He fell asleep during story time, so he's up to sleep in the kitchen. Which is good, because I don't think he could have this, given how, given how much onions it has anyway. Mm. Alright. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.